reminder, no live streaming. Thank you. I'll open as always, thanking our fans, and uh, really felt the, the turnout of the dollar walk was probably one of the best ones we've had this year. Uh, a lot of fans there, it means a lot to our kids. And I thought the atmosphere was uh, really good as well. So I'm um, proud of our team. Um, probably the most important step for us is the next step. And we're taking it one step at a time. And uh, that was a really good football team that we just played. Got a lot of respect, uh, especially for their defense, the physicality they play with. Um, they got good defensive guys up front. Uh, tough, tough team to play. Uh, this program is built on being neutral. That's where we try to remain. And uh, we got to get better to get where we're going. And our guys are excited about doing that. But I thought the effort was really good. I thought that uh, our kids played really hard, played consistent. We continue to protect the ball. We're not turning it over much, and we're not getting any turnovers, which we got to do a better job of. But the effort was there. So I'm proud of the way the kids played. Coach, the shout-out for the third one of the year, just the effort there at the end, especially the new goal Yeah, you can't say enough about the defensive staff, the game plan they put together, uh, the buy-in from the kids. You know, we, we preached all week how well these guys ran the ball on us last year. Thought they ran the ball on us as good as anybody last year. And um, the, the defensive players kind of hung their hats on that. And uh, they were all chomping at the bit at the end to, to make it tough to score. And uh, I thought they showed some competitive character at the end with that. Monty Rice had a big hit, Kirby threw him back almost the five yard line. He said they just ran a stunt. His teammates sacrificed for him. He shot through there. What was it? Woke up. That's exactly what he said. I mean, teammates sacrificed for him. We talk about it all the time. A big thing this game was uh, sacrificing for your brothers. And there's a lot of guys up front that knocked the ball back to free Monty up. And he had some guys inside that were getting blocked to kind of free him up. And uh, he made a really nice play, too. Coach, it seemed like the secondary sort of settled into the game. Did it feel like it got harder to throw as the game went on at all? Uh, I don't know if it got harder to throw. I felt like it was um, it was tough at times. They do a good job. They're a very aggressive physical defense, which I said that all week. I mean, who's not in our conference? But uh, they, they, they're really physical up front, and they do a good job in the secondary getting hands on people. Um, and they mix, they mix coverage as well. They did a good job mixing things up on third down. A lot of injury blows on offense. Uh, any update on Cager, and what about the other offensive linemen went down the game? Uh, I think Cager will be fine. Um, he, he bothered his uh, his uh, shoulder again, but we think he's going to be fine. Probably could have came back if he had to. And then um, the other guys, I think, are fine. We got uh, Trey with an ankle. Um, K was fine. He could have came back in. And I don't know who Isaiah else. Wilson Isaiah had to be helped back. off. He came back. He came back. Thoughtful how they did uh, using Cade at Southern and Jamari. Yeah, I'd have to reserve judgment. You know, I, I can't really say. I mean, I know going in the game that each one of them practices there and they get reps. So it's not like I mean, Cade took reps with the ones last week at center. He gets reps and Trey works out at guard, so he gets a lot of reps. Jamari does not get as many, but he gets some. So we'll watch the tape, and see how they did. Cade said he hadn't played center in the game since sixth grade. Kind of wasn't saying like anybody was able to come in and play like he did. Uh, he's very versatile. I mean, that's what it says. But I don't. I look at it as practice is game to me. He gets a ton of reps in practice. But uh, Cade's a gamer. He doesn't. You know, the moment's not too big for him. He's very intelligent. He's very athletic. What do you think of what George was able to do tonight after Cade went down? George did a good job. I mean, if he got on the ball, he'd add two touchdowns. Yeah. Is this a case with uh, with Pickens of? You know, improvement throughout the year led to something like tonight, or was it more of just opportunity and matchups? Uh, he, he, he's getting better. I mean, I think everybody on our team's getting better. I thought that the way they played us, it, it, it opened up a lot of one on one opportunities, but you can't. I mean, we got a lot of long foul balls tonight, too, and you've got to hit some of those. You've got to hit them at a higher rate uh, to make them count. And uh, he's one of our guys that we think can win outside. Um, with uh, Richard, in terms of the interception he had there, he's had a couple of, of turnovers here throughout the season. For for him to come up with plays like that, what does that say about the, the development that he's made this season in the last couple of years? Richard's a ball hawk. He's got really good ball skills. He's a great basketball player in high school. I thought that was a I – mean, I, I didn't think we were going to catch it. I thought it was going to get overthrow. And it went up and um, – it had sticky, I mean, he had like sticky hands. He grabbed it, snagged it, made a heck of a play on the ball, and then had a great return. Um, 
Richard's improved. He continues to get better. Um, I, I was more uh, proud of his t physical tackling tonight than probably even the turnover. And he's taken a lot better approach in the last two weeks. He's really been into the game plan and making his calls. I've been really, really proud of him. Kirby, through nine games, you guys have had some really good flashes on offense, and then you've had some times where it seems like you kind of get bogged down a little bit. Is there a common theme that you've seen through these nine games that kind of you know, goes into that where one drive looks like you can't be stopped, and then the next few you kind of struggle to get it going? No. I mean, you give up a negative play, and it's about an 80% chance you're not going to have a good drive. So when we get sacked or we give up a negative play, we usually don't continue to have good drives. We'll get positive yardage on first and second, and we convert third downs, and then we're pretty efficient. Um, can't say exactly what it is. I mean, there's a lot of things mixed in there. we got to do some things better. Uh, we got to play better in the red area. You know, we've played these guys three years, and I swear we've had 28 field goals in three years. I don't know what the total is, but it's ridiculous. <laughs> so we, we've got to find a way to score touchdowns when it matters most. And thank goodness we've got a very consistent field goal kicker who continues to come through. And, I thought Rod did a tremendous job tonight. That was with tough conditions for kicking. I mean, field's tough, it's damp, it's moist, it's slippery, and, and it's cold. And he was very consistent from good distances, <coughs> long distances. Auburn uh, is the next game, obviously, and there's a lot riding on it. Uh, you could clinch the East. Can you just what, what do you know about it, and what do you think about when you think of you going to Jordan Hare to play a game? Uh, they got a great program. Gus does a tremendous job. Got a lot of respect for the way they play. A physical football team. Great defense, uh, really good young quarterback, uh, really hard offense to prepare for. Um, you know, just I've seen Gus and I have seen a lot of each other over the years and uh, got a lot of respect for their program and I know they'll be ready to play coming off and off week. What do you want to see George improve the most Uh Consistency. Um, playing with his mind in the right place and doing the little things right. Attention to detail is what gets George, you know, just like you saw tonight. I mean, as talented as he is, if he doesn't have attention to detail, he can hurt the team. Or if he does have attention to detail, he can really help the team. And, uh, he's got to do those things right. But uh, he's, he's talented and he loves the game. That's what I love about him. He loves the game of football. When you talk about the offense still kind of struggling with the consistency at times, do you feel like at this point of the year, kind of style points and all that kind of stuff is out the window? It's just a survive in advance type thing. Yeah, I don't really think about style points. I just think about what we have to do to win the game and uh, what we have to do to be more efficient and uh, what we have to do to be at our best. I'm not, I'm not, that's a good football team. <laughs> There's a reason they're ranked top 15 in the country in almost every single defensive category. Uh, they have good players. Coach, your third uh, shutout of the year, is that a product of, I mean, you had another backup quarterback tonight. You think you guys got, a little bit lucky in that regard, or is this as good of a defense as it looks like sometimes? You know, I mean, we play hard. We play consistent. We don't control who they put in front of us. And uh, our kids go out and play really tough and physical. And that's all we can ask them to do. And uh, they've done a great job of that. The buy-in on that side of the ball, the playing a lot of players, the camaraderie, the defensive staff. Uh, Dan and his staff have done a great job of putting plans together. The kids have executed them. It's hard for me to judge, you know, who we've gone against. Swift and Harry run into a lot of seven, eight man boxes. Can you just talk about the hard yard they're running into their ball security and those circumstances? Yeah, that was, a, that was the hardest box you'll ever see. I mean, that was like a brick wall box, and uh, it's tough. Uh, we've, we've, we've run the ball in the same box, but that was really good players with a hard box. And uh, they did a good job, and, and we still, you know, rush for. 166 yards, guys. That's that, you're not going to find many teams do that on Missouri. And uh, I am proud of the way Brian and, and Swift are patient. Uh, they earn those yards, really physical yards. I mean, those are tough. And it's it's just not like the standard here is you should get seven, eight yards every rush. That's just not realistic. And uh, I'm proud of the way our guys work hard at it. Missouri sort of had a game time decision at quarterback. Were you coming in sort of preparing for? Kelly Bryant's mobility, how did you sort of adjust that with Taylor Powell and how did you think he uh, Yeah, we were prepared for both. We thought that either one would play. And, um, you know, I think the kid that played is a good player. And uh, he's going to grow up and get better. And, um, 
we felt like all week we might see either one. It didn't matter to us which one we saw. We were going to carry a lot of the same things, so it didn't change a whole lot for us. How valuable were those snaps for Tyson Campbell just getting it back in action with the stretch drive? Really happy for him to uh, get back in. We feel like we got three corners that can that can play for us, and uh, it allows you to kind of you know play matchups, put guys on certain guys, and play the hot hand. And glad well, he got back out there and um, and got back, got, kind of got his feet under him. Look there on defense at one point, and you had four freshmen in the game. I think it was on third down with Nolan and Trayvon and uh, Kobe and Tyreek. Uh, speaking mainly of Tyreek here, what, what was it that kind of led to him seeing a lot more playing time tonight than, than maybe he has in previous games? He's worked really hard. Um, he's, he's a kid that continues to get better. We talk about it each week. Um, we thought he matched up well with uh, their tight end. He's a big physical guy, and uh, he made some plays on him. He got beat and played wrong leverage, but he also made some plays uh, in one-on-one -on -one situations against what we think is a really good tight end. Uh, he's growing up. He's gaining some confidence. Uh, and and divides, divides a little dinged up. So it was you know, a matter of guys. We got a lot of guys beat up and injured. And uh, divide, Mark had to play in the star position, so I put Tyreek up at money. Kirby, there's a so-called game of the century going on uh, you know, in the hours before your game. Does that uh, do you guys catch glimpses of that, or do you guys get score updates on that uh, when you're focused on, on what you have to do? No, we're just trying to get an opportunity to play one. You know, we'll play one of those two. That's what we're worried about. If you fall asleep at the wheel or get distracted, you know, you can't you can't control your own destiny if you don't worry about the ones in front of you. So I didn't see anything. Say about Tyson was kind of uh, game time last week. This season. When, when did you feel confident that he would go? Well, we thought he could have played last week. I mean, we talked about that during the week. I think we said that he, he, he probably could have played. He didn't feel like he was 100%. He practiced all week this week, and we felt like he was good to go. We wanted to give him an opportunity to play because we feel like we're going to need him down the stretch. And you know, keeping, keeping corners healthy is hard, and we try to keep the yards off those guys by rolling those three guys. Nolan Smith seems like he's been close on a lot of sacks this year in terms of getting the quarterback down. How big for it was for him? How big do you think it was for him to sort of get that? Yeah, I didn't even realize he got one. How many sacks did we have? Two or three? Two. So I guess uh, I didn't realize he got one. I know we had a couple times we couldn't finish on the quarterback. He scrambled out and made some plays for us. But uh, he has been close a lot. You know, he was close on the last play of the Notre Dame deal, chasing him around. Um, he's getting better. He's playing with more and more confidence. This is where freshmen aren't freshmen anymore. And this is where last year we had a lot of these kids step up and play well. And um, we got several of them trying to do the same thing now. Seems like we're seeing a lot more of Jermaine Johnson as well. Uh, is, has he got gained an increased role, and, and what kind of led to that? We just got injuries. You know, Walter's hurt. So, I mean, in the situation, some of the situations Walter would have played, Jermaine gets some more opportunity. So, it's the next man up. And, uh, that's that's kind of what we got Tyreek McGee the same way. He's got a lot of guys injured and hurt. So, uh, other guys get opportunities. And I think Jermaine's going to try to take advantage of those. Will Drew lead the vaccine? I don't know. He's like day to day. We thought he might be able to go, but he couldn't. Zamir really knocked out some key first downs there, Dan Curry. He just likes to run with a passion every time he comes on the field. Yeah, he's probably the most different runner we got. You know, he's physical. He's got really good hands out of the backfield. He can catch it, but uh, he's a physical downhill runner. And I mean, you can't make it through our league with two backs. You better have three or four because you see why out there. And it's 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 tough sledding. Two more questions. Talk about your young players playing. Feel like your football team's playing its best of the year right now. I think we are at some spots. You know, I, we, we've had we've had brighter moments at some spots, and uh, we, 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 we've got some guys that are playing well. We're, we're reaping the benefit on defense of all the frustration last year, and uh, that was a tough year. We had a lot of young players, and it just feels like there's a lot of kids that grew up. You know, at the end of the year last year, the bowl practices. We're, we're reaping the benefits of of all those guys playing. Um, that's helped us tremendously. But we certainly are not where we need to be. We are not where we, we're going to have to be to play at, a, at the level we need to play at to get where we want to go. We're not there yet. But our kids are working hard, and they're buying into that, and they haven't shied away from the work that we're requiring of them. How much will uh, Auburn having been off on an off week uh, it, it versus your team's health? How much of your health, your team's health, do you feel like it will be a factor next week? There's no way I could answer that. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who's in, who's out, who's dinged up, who's not. 
Um, at the end of the day, you, you play with the guys that are healthy, and, and, and there's no crying over it because you've got a tough team to go play, and I'm sure they got some injuries too.